Hello friends, Del Ballou here again. I have a little tutorial. I just thought I'd share some things I've learned. Uh, this painting that you see is one I started in plein air at the Smoky Mountains picnic area. And um, I'm going to finish it here today in this video. But I just wanted to share some things I've learned. Um, I haven't had a lot of experience uh, painting plein air, but enough lately to know some good and bad things to do. Um, this painting is done on, um, let's see, I think this might be 8 by 10, not sure, might be 11 by 14, but before I went on my trip, I took some watercolor paper and I cut it up to fit the top, and this is a canvas, which I kept the plastic on, and then I cut the pieces, and I have several under this one. I like the feel of a canvas because it's soft, so that's the reason for taping it on here, and so I taped it around. So when this painting is finished, I'll just remove the tape, take this painting off, put some more tape on, and go back um, to the clean page. Okay, now, what I wanted to share with you is some practical things. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos and a um, lot of different um, equipment that people have used, and I've found the most efficient way to do this, and I'm just going to share it with you. Um, one of the things that I've learned is um, I don't have to carry my paint in something that's, um, you know, big and clunky. And I don't have to worry about paint getting all over anything else. So I have this little bag that I saved from pillowcases that I purchased. So I just put my necessary paint in here, problem solved. And I use paper towels to clean my brushes, sometimes to apply paint and, and other things, but I just folded up my paper towels and put them in my bag. That way I don't have to deal with the, the roll and the space that it takes up. But probably the most efficient part of this get this back up here so you can see it all. Um, this is my paint box. This is what I use all the time. I keep it beside me on my table when I'm working, when I'm painting. It is a Masterson paint box and you can seal it um, pretty much airtight. It has these little prongs on it and that keeps your palette from turning over and getting stuck. Of course, you can see that on some occasions <laughs> that didn't work all that well for me, but it's not a big loss, not a big problem. It is a, a usable um, little box. Okay, and then I paint on a palette pad. Sometimes I carry my easel, which also fits right down in here. Um, this is a piece of glass that I just bound and put in here um, that I sometimes use, but typically I wouldn't carry it with me to paint outdoors because it does add just a little bit of weight. But I put my medium in just a regular jar. I know you can buy containers that you can hang on your, your easel that's um, equipped for that sort of thing. But anyway, I have these little plastic um, pot scrubbers that I put down in the bottom. Now, my turp is really muddy right now because it's been on its side and I've turned it up. But typically, the turp that's in the top will be clean because all the dregs go to the bottom. Then you have your pot scrubber underneath to use to clean your brush off. Then I carry my liquid in these neat little plastic containers that I bought, I don't know, eight of them 
at the dollar store for a dollar and they seal very well so and that's lightweight don't have to carry my bottle then what I do when I get to where I'm going if I'm going to be standing up to paint I can do that on an easel and I found this past weekend when I was out painting that I liked sitting in a chair and when you have a canvas that's about this size you can hold it and paint and I also found that I could put my little um, palette container down on the ground and I have long brushes so I just reached over got the paint I needed and you know brought it up worked on my canvas so that cuts down tremendously on the amount of equipment you have to take. Now, um, I have had this particular uh, easel that I'm about to show you for so many years I can't even remember. And it's, it's really handy. Now, I'm not sure how I can get this exactly in the videotape, but the one thing that I want to point out here is that this particular easel, now the legs extend, but in this particular easel I have this nice little crossbars here that fit very nicely for my little paint box. And of course it's not extended all the way, but it sits right there like a table. So that's a good thing. Um, unfortunately, where I was painting this past weekend, um, there were rocks and roots everywhere on the ground. And I didn't dare try to stand up and paint because I'm known to step back to look at my paintings and then what happens is I would trip for sure. Well, I was in kind of a tight space, but anyway, um, I had this thing all folded up like it folds here. You see how efficiently it folds up. The legs extend. And then this extends as high as you need for it to. I would tell you the brand, but I've had it so long I don't have a clue. But anyway, it's been a good one because it's very lightweight. But I was dismantling everything and walking around with this and I was folding it up at the same time I was walking. Um, just give you a little hint, don't do that. I, I fell on it and that's why these are crooked but that's a little piece of advice. Pay attention to where you're walking. And don't try to walk and do something else at the same time. Um, obviously don't do that very well. So anyway, that's my little words of advice. Well, here's an idea of the way the paint box can sit on this lightweight easel. Mine is sli slightly crooked for some reason, but I can adjust that. But this, these little spaces are just perfect for the paint box. And I typically might hold my palette in my hand. And if that's the case, um, I still have my other things like my medium and so forth all right there before me and then I have my bag with extra paint down on the ground beside me and it all works I realized why I couldn't tell the name of this easel I lost the part of it that had the name on it and I've been doing some investigation online and I did find one, and I'll give the information for that one. But if you're in need of a lightweight easel, and you want to use it the way I do, you really have to make sure that 
there is the brace in the middle, the cross brace. Like this. I actually only found one online. That doesn't mean you can't find them in an art supply store, but anyway, just a suggestion. I'm going to show you a bag. Um, I made this bag uh, many years ago for, um, for another purpose, but it turns out it's perfect because it fits perfectly with my Masterson and with canvases that are smaller, of course. But I have a wide pocket here and what's under here are five by seven panels. And then there's a place here for brushes, pencils, and so forth. Um, but I kept my brushes in my little box here. And of course, they rolled around a bit no harm done, but when I finished painting, I pulled out my roll of masking tape, which I had taken with me, and I just wrapped some masking tape around everything, and then I could stick them right in here, and I'm ready to go. So all of these things that I showed you fit neatly into this little bag, and I'm ready to rock and roll. Now, I also have this little thing, and you can make these easily, but this is a brush holder. I could have untied this before, but I didn't. Okay, a little brush holder that has my trusty pliers. Should always carry pliers because paint tubes are difficult to open at best. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I have my little um, palette knife that I use for mixing paint. And um, so this folds up very neatly, and it also fits in my bag. But after this past weekend, I decided I don't need to take all these brushes. So probably just a little roll of masking tape will do the trick. Okay, well, I'm going to... Uh, move all these things, get organized, and then I'm going to come back and finish this little painting that I've started. Uh, the place where I was set up, very rocky, and had a nice stream running down over these rocks, which is my, it's my favorite place in the world to be. But there are so many rocks and so many trees you really have to be uh, selective. And that's what I was doing for most of this experience. Okay, I'm trying to get down a little closer here. Going the wrong way. Okay. But um, I, I only placed a few of the rocks and I've gotten started on the, the background for my water. But after all is said and done, I'm just going to be making up the rocks as I go along and place them wherever I want them. Um, but it's very complicated when you're looking at a scene with so much information. And you have to decide uh, what your focal point is going to be, number one. Now, my focal point is going to be this log, uh, which is a tree that fell who knows how many years ago and has begun to uh, disintegrate and break apart but um, right now it looks like an alligator head sorry about that but that's going to be my focal point and then everything else is just going to emerge around it I'm pretty much satisfied with the foliage in the background and then I'll have more foliage in the foreground as time goes along. So stay with me um, and just watch with me and see how this scene develops. And thanks for visiting and thanks for watching. I'll be back. OK, 
Okay, I am ready to begin to um, finish up this painting. Um, I did download a photograph of the scene through an email onto my Kindle, so this is what I'm going to be using as my reference photo, um, just to give me some idea how to stay on track. Um, and although it's not exactly the same composition, because I moved some trees around and, um, you know, just created my own little composition here, but this will give me a little bit of a guideline to keep me on track and especially to help me get some of these rocks in place. I'm using this round um, number six book, uh, brush, excuse me, uh, Royal and Langnickel, and I'm going to be speeding this up now so I won't be talking to you um, unless I do um, a narrative over the video. But um, just hang in there with me and enjoy. realized that the rocks in the background, though they should be bluer than the gray in the rocks in the foreground, I will be toning those down somewhat um, and gray them a little bit more in the future.
for the water, I'm going to be using a white bristle brush, number two, because this brush is slightly old, so the bristles are spread out on the end, and it gives me a nice um, array of little marks. And to do this water, that's going to be pretty important. I'm using white, uh, titanium white, a little liquid, and a very tiny, tiny bit of yellow. So you want to check that yellow in your brush to make sure you don't have too much. But um, using stark white is probably not the best thing to do. When I'm finished with everything else, there will probably be a few specks of pure white that I'll put on these little waves, as it were. This is a fairly shallow creek, so the water is rushing over the rocks and it's creating little, um, little foam or little wave um, formations. And um, so that's where I'm going with this and what I'm going to be doing with the brush. Then I'm going to be working on the trees. Um, the, tree, the two larger trees are the trees that are up front that are closest and the others are in the background. The biggest issue I have to deal with at this point is uh, making sure the overlapping is correct. Um, and I'm just filling in spaces now. I'll go back and do some more details when that is dry. And so we're up to date so far. So um, join me for the next session when I'll be working on the trees a little bit more. I'm going to let them get dry before I work any further. But um, so happy painting and thanks for sticking with me and I will be back.
Well, after photographing this painting and putting it um, on Facebook, I realized how terribly crooked everything is. I knew I had a problem with this tree, and I've straightened it up, comparatively speaking, but it was not enough because having this tree leaning in, which it does naturally, um, it's caused the whole painting to shift. So I had two choices. I can fix it or I can just discard the painting and call it a lesson learned. But I think I'm going to attack the change so I can keep the rest. Not happy with um, the way this log has turned out, so I'm going to rework it too. So stay tuned here and let's see what happens when I make this attempt. Because I really do hate to discard something that I've spent a lot of time and energy on. And um, this video has some helpful information that I didn't want to discard either. So here we go. Okay, I have gotten um, the tree part that I don't want. I've got covered over with background colors. And I'm going to let this dry. And then when it dries, I'll come back and um, sort of start from scratch with this tree. I hate to do this to a painting, but to tell you the truth, the thing I hate more is to discard a painting because I don't like it or because there's something fatally flawed about it, and that would definitely be the case with this tree. So I've straightened it up, pretty much eliminating what was going on up here, and I'll create another rock or extend this rock and then I have to rework the water all together. I remove the fallen tree. I think it bothered me because it was dead and I really just couldn't make it look to suit me. So I did away with it. Um, I might find a little log or two in there to take its place, but right now I'm happy without it. So I'll be back.
Well, friends, I'm calling this done, and as you will notice, I decided to take out the entire tree and the fallen log. Um, I'm pretty well satisfied with the outcome. Uh, it's been a good exercise for me. Um, I put a lot of touches on this painting as you notice if you stayed with me the whole time and I don't mind doing that as long as my outcome is pleasing to me which is why I had to get rid of that big tree and that log I was feeling claustrophobic and as I may have said already I think my objection to that tree that fallen tree is that it was dead and I like my things in nature to be alive. And so I have I have come to a conclusion. Um, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Please go to my other videos on this channel. And also check into my website, www.delbaloo.com. And thank you so much for coming and for staying with me.